Okay, welcome back. We're about done with the thumb gusset and we're going to start the top of the mitt section. Okay, so when I left you, you were working even in the pattern for two inches or until you feel like it's time to separate off these stitches for the thumb section, which um, I kind of think it is for me. I've, I've knitted it as far as I want to. Let me see here. And then what we're gonna do is just, we're just gonna pinch off Part of those will not pinch off maybe that's not the right word but you'll see okay so the next part after we've worked even in pattern for two inches the next round now we're just gonna work the stitches now the pattern says work 29 stitches in pattern and then move the next 18 to a stitch holder or a waist yarn for the thumb gusset but that didn't make any sense to me because I think we should be working 30 and then moving 18 because um, 30 and 18 is 48, and you should have 48 stitches on needle number one, according to the previous thumb gusset directions. So, double count yours. I think that might just be a, a typo in the pattern. Um, you know, some sometimes that happens. Sometimes there's mistakes. So, I'm just going to work across here in pattern. So, I'm sticking with my... Uh, Pedro ribbing pattern. I'll fast forward through this part so uh, you don't have to watch it all. Okay, now I have another cat that's not helping much. We'll just have to deal. Um, okay, so the, just like I said it earlier, the, despite the fact that the pattern says working across 29 stitches, I went 30 because 30 stitches is when I would have 18 left. And so now I'm just going to, you can either put, put that on some kind of a stitch holder. Okay, that is not helpful. <laughs> you can put that on some kind of a holder or I just am, I'm just using um, cotton. It's like a just a cotton worsted weight like the kind of thing you would knit or crochet a dish cloth out of. I think it's actually called kitchen cotton. Anyway, I use that often because it's not super smooth and so, and I make it long enough that it won't, um, you know, slip out on its own. Okay, so I just use a, a darning needle and I just go in and I'm slipping as if to purl, so I'm careful not to twist any of my stitches. And I'm gonna put these remaining 18 stitches on the waist yarn to hold a side to make our thumb the cylinder that will our thumb goes in so being careful not to split any stitches and going along there okay so and then I just uh, pull this through carefully I probably could use a little smaller of a needle but that's all right okay so now I know those are secure so just so that you can visualize What's actually going to happen here? Let me just uh, zoom out a little bit if I can, maybe not, and show you. Bear with me here. Okay, try to get. The, I should have taken off the Fitbit. Okay. So what? What's the point here? Is I'm. We've made the gusset. I'm separating off these stitches, and then that's going to go around the outside of my thumb. Now we're going to take this and attach it back here and draw that closed. So then we've started the base of the cylinder for our thumb to go in. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Now you're wondering how that's going to reach. Um, the next portion of the pattern is going to tell us to cast on six stitches in order to bridge that gap. Um, there's many methods to do that. There's a cable cast on which is what I like to use and I'll teach you that. Um, I think it's a little more secure. Before I learned the cable cast on which was actually fairly recently all I would do to cast on extra stitches would just be to simply do a half hitch basically on the needle where I was. So let me show you that first because that's by far the easiest thing and it's adequate. I don't think it's as good of a, an edge or maybe as as thick of an edge, if you will. Um, but, you know, if you don't want to mess with learning the new cast on, then that's totally fine. You can do this. So, all you want to do here is take your yarn and you're going to make a loop. You're going to turn it over like this. Okay? 
You don't want to go, well, I guess you could go this way. I do it this way. So that the working yarn is coming out from underneath. And then I'm just going to put it down over. Okay, see that? So that would be one. And then I do it again, that's two. three, four, and so on. You would do that however many stitches your pattern calls for. Um, and that's, like I said, that's adequate. It makes, you know, you can see, it makes an okay, just a little slip stitch edge, but it's um, it loosens up pretty easily, actually. So kind of not my favorite. Um, all right, so let me show, you can do that if you want, but I'm gonna show you the cable cast on. Okay, this is the right side of my knitting, and over here is the beginning of my round. See, here's my tag tail end. This is the beginning of my round, and this is the right side. So to do this cable cast on, I'm going to actually turn it over, okay? And I'm still going to I'm going to work with my working needle, but I want it to be in my left hand right now. Then I'm going to curl around the other needle so we can use them in conjunction. Okay, so to do this, we're going to put the right needle, let me just work this down here, put the right needle between these two stitches. I'm not knitting into this loop, I'm just going between the two stitches, okay? Then I'm going to take, take the yarn and wrap it as if to knit, just like I'm doing a knit stitch, and I'm going to pull it through. So all I've done is made a loop between those two existing stitches. Then I want to just work this around and put it back onto the left hand needle and just cinch it up a little bit. Now I'm going to do the same thing again. Between the first and the second stitch, I'm going to go in between, wrap it as if to knit, and pull that through as well. And then I'm going to place that one back onto the left needle. Okay, so I've done two. I'm going to carry on like that as many times as I need to to cast on the number of stitches asked for with the pattern. Now that got a little bit tight, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna loosen that up a hair, and I'm gonna go back in between the stitches. Okay, wrap it counterclockwise as if to knit, and draw the loop through. Okay, if it's getting a little tight on you like it is on me, you're just gonna wanna you know just pull this up a little bit. You don't want it to be super loose, but you don't want it to be so difficult that you can't even get this in either. Okay, so now that I'm talking, I'm kind of losing track of how many I've done. <laughs> But here's how we can tell. Um, I'm gonna go back and look. Now you can see this this column here was the knit. It looks like a knit on this side when really it's a purl on the on the right side. So that's where we started. So we've done one, two, three, four. Okay, I've done four. So I just need two more for my thumb gusset. So again, I'm gonna just loosen that up a little bit so I can get my needle needle in there comfortably. Wrap as if to knit, and draw that through. Okay, so this will be five, and one more. It is a little bit more of a pain. That one I'm gonna do over because I accidentally split that stitch. That's all right. Okay, what I was saying was, you know, it is a little bit more time consuming than just doing that, you know, looping half hitch method, but I really think it makes a more secure edge. You can notice notice that here. It makes a more sturdy edge and it's not gonna loosen up as much and so I really prefer that. Okay, so let's turn our work back over now that we've added our six stitches. Okay, all right, so you can see how we've added that and now, since we're magic looping, we're just gonna turn Turn our work. Well, I'm going to draw this through, okay, and then I'll draw through this side. All right, just get all this out of the way. I know it feels super fiddly right now, but once we establish this and get going round and round again, it will look better and become easier in just a couple of seconds. So I'm going to draw this back through, go in as if to knit. I'm at the beginning of a six stitch pattern. Now I'm just going to draw this together and I'm going to hang on to it with my left hand so that I make sure that this first couple of stitches are super snug. So 
give your working yarn a little tug with your right index finger there and actually the second one is equally important just give that a little tug so that we make sure that everything is um, snugged up because you don't want a gap or a hole at the inside of your thumb gusset okay now we're just going to work in pattern again to the end of the round but let me show you see that's going to be fabulous that's drawn up pretty closely right there okay all right so work to the end of the round now we've come to the end of that round and now we're at the end of the thumb gusset section so you should have 70 stu 72 stitches here and 18 stitches on your thumb portion and there's our connection there which yeah it did loosen up a little bit but I will um, yank you know I'll give that a good little tug next time we go around so now beginning the top of the mitt we're just gonna work in the same pattern for one inch then we'll begin decreasing slowly as we get to the top all right we've knitted 36 now we're gonna knit two together again on the other side of the hand so try not to split the stitch there okay and we're still in keeping with our pattern all right so with that um, we've decreased two just then so we're gonna carry on doing that um, decreasing the back to the original 60 stitches so you're gonna just follow that pattern for the top of the mitt then we'll work two more rounds even and I'll be back all right we have finished um, decreasing down to 60 stitches and then working two rounds even so we're kind of in the middle section there so the next round we're gonna knit four purl two so we're gonna go back to our ribbing like we had at the bottom of the cuff here now and we're gonna do that um, in that established pattern that four by two ribbing for just a half an inch so like I said earlier you can either put a slip marker right here so you can measure or you can go back and you know measure an inch count how many rows that is whatever works for you you're just gonna do that for a half an inch all right we're back um, I have knitted a little more than I think that two inches that the pattern calls for um, and then the pattern suggests that you decrease a little further and kind of narrow the top of this to kind of match the way your hand decreases here in width I'm choosing not to do that I just went ahead and knitted the ribbing as high up on uh, you know as far up on my hand as I wanted to and there, for me um, the reason I'm doing that is because I want it a little wider on the top I because I'm going to be using these for walking during the colder seasons I want to be able to tuck my fingers actually down in if I'm super cold but I want to be able to get my fingers out if I need to answer a phone call or if my hands get a little warm um, so I'm choosing to just keep it at 60 stitches and knit that all the way up um, at the same width um, let me put it on here and I'll show you so for me um, this is kind of this is how I want to have it I, I might add I, I think I'm done I'm not sure I want it any taller than that but I do want to be able to tuck my hands down in there if I choose so I'm gonna go ahead and skip the decreasing part at the top of the mitt um, you do what you think is best because you're the boss of your knitting I'm gonna go ahead and bind this off bind off loosely and I'll show you the way I choose to do that it's just a very very simple bind off um, similar to what well, it is I believe exactly the same as what we've done in previous projects um, not the sock obviously because that was a decreasing toe down to a Kitchener stitch um, but certainly the way we bound off similar to how we bound off with the slipper tutorial so I'm just gonna knit the first stitch like normal then I'm gonna knit the second and I, and I want to make sure actually that first one's a little bit more loose than normal so I just pulled it through a little longer knit the second one then I'm gonna grab a hold of this first one underneath like this and pull it over this be careful not to split a stitch pull it over the second so go ahead and knit another one and you're gonna to want to pull the first one over the one you just knit and then I give it an extra little tug to loosen that up you do not not want this to be tight otherwise the top edge will pucker and you don't want that so just do everything you know a little more loosely than you normally would being careful not to split a stitch 
And you know, you don't want it all widened out either. You'll just have to kind of find your own groove with that. Um, so, but you can see how you bind off. This is like the most simple bind off. There's lots of different ways. There's a stretchy sew, bind off that you sew. Um, and we'll probably get to that in some other projects, but you can see how that just makes a nice edge at the top. Okay, so I'm gonna continue to bind off around the edge of the top of this, and then we'll get to picking up these stitches that we left for the thumb. All right, when you get to the end, you should have this kind of situation where it kind of seems like the, the right side is a little taller than the left. So I like to go back into kind of the space between the, the end of the round and the beginning. And I just knit into that space and then do one final leap over, stitch over, kind of bind off, just to kind of equalize that difference in the levels if you will, um, and I, uh, there we go. And then I pull that through a little bit, and you go ahead and cut this, cut your yarn, and leave yourself, a, you know, I don't know, I like to leave three or four inches of a tail. Hang on here, I gotta go find a scissors, or something, not very prepared here. Leave yourself a tail that you can weave in, and then I just go ahead and pull that through, okay? All right, so now I'm just going to weave in this tail with a darning needle, and I just go underneath that ridge top edge there. It kind of looks like a single crochet stitch edge. And I just go back and forth underneath that a few times until I feel like it's secure down the way. Um, if you want to, you could always take your tail and go on the inside, and you could go down one of these columns of knit stitches, and I may do that as well. So just weave that in so that it's um, not noticeable from the outside. And then we'll carry on with picking up our thumb gusset stitches. Now we're moving on to pick up the 18 stitches that we put on this waist yarn to hold for our, our thumb. So this, you know, this can be a little bit tricky. Um, you just have to be careful and make sure you get your bifocals on, progressives, whatever. Make sure you have some good lighting, especially if you're using darker yarn. So what I'm doing here is just, um, I'm just gonna pull my waist yarn so that I can get the tail end of it closer to the point at which I'm gonna start picking up these this first stitch. Hang on just a second, I dropped my needle. All right, so I'm gonna slip this in as if to purl. I'm gonna try to hold this out of the way and I'm gonna put this in, let me get up here closer for you, put this in as if to purl and I try to do two or three, even though it may not be possible because this the waist yarn that I used is a little thicker than I probably should have. It would be easier to go in underneath if I would have used thinner yarn, but you can, you can see how I'm going in underneath there. Then I'm just gonna use my nail and pull, pull that out. So I know that's tedious, but thankfully there's only 18 of them if you were, huh, if you were making a shawl, for example, that had a provisional a provisional cast on, and we might even do that one time next spring, you know, think if you had about 200 of these to do. Um, so 18 is, is perfectly manageable. So you can see how I'm going about that. So you do that and then we'll be back and I'll show you what's next. All right, now the pattern, we've, we've picked the, all these stitches up, there should be 18 here, and we're gonna do the ribbing now for the thumb, and the ribbing's just gonna be the same pattern we did up here, the four by two, but we need to rejoin the yarn, okay? So what I usually do is just, I just lay it next to it, and I put my other, let me get my other end of the needle here, I just go in the first stitch as if to knit, because I'm going to knit, um, and I'm not sure why I do this. You can just wrap it counterclockwise and just start knitting and then just secure this end afterward. I'm not sure why, but I tend to wrap it clockwise, the opposite way to start with. And that does um, secure it a little, it's still s kind of um, loose, but I'm, I'm actually holding down the tail with the back of my index finger here. And we will, I'll show you what I'll do on the next round to secure that tail. So I'm going to knit two, sorry, knit four, purl two, because that was our established uh, ribbing pattern. 
Okay, I want to show you what we're going to do when we get around to the side here where we have did, done that cable cast on before. So, alright, we've knitted those 18 in the beginning of our rib ribbing. So we need, to, this gets a little bit fiddly. Now what you're going to want to do is pick up the stitches that we have going on on the inside here, okay? We cast on six when we went across, and we want to pick those up now so that six plus 18 for a total of 24 stitches around our thumb. Now, we might have to pick up a couple of extra ones down here in the, the ditch. I call this down in the ditch here because I don't like holes where the thumb join is. So even if we end up picking up a couple extra and, you know, decreasing back down to 24 later, that's totally fine. In fact, I'm probably just going to go ahead and plan to do that. So there's a bar here that I'm noticing. I'm probably gonna pick up that, and I might even pick up this next one under here. So I'm gonna pick that up, and if you'll notice, if I were to just knit into that, it's, it's going to leave a bit of a hole. But if I twist it, if I twist that loop, it will help to close it. So I'm actually gonna kind of do a maneuver where I twist it like that and put it on there Okay, I've twisted that, and then I'm going to knit, knit into that, okay? So there's one. I'm probably going to do the same thing you can see maybe here. Um, I just kind of fudge it, to be truthful, because um, I do not like holes. It's kind of a pet peeve. I don't like to have holes in my where the thumb join is. Um, okay, so that's two. Now I can start picking up. I know that's kind of angled funny now. And the reason for that is it's all on one needle. What I'm gonna do here, since it's angled funny, is I'm gonna go ahead and, and separate off like half of these and draw my magic loop through there, the cable through there, so that it lessens some tension and I can angle my needle the other direction. Um, and I may have to adjust where I pull have pull, pulled that through so I have half and half later on. Um, but that lessens the tension and, and the tendency to make my needle go wonky back toward me. That just gives me a little more flexibility. So, yeah, everything right now is super fiddly, and it, it'll get better, trust me. All right, and then here's my working yarn. So I'm going to want to just go ahead and tension that and keep everything together. Now, I'm kind of holding this upside down, but I want you to see where I'm going to go pick up these stitches that I've that I've done with the cable cast on before. Okay, I'm going to go underneath this right here, wrap around, and I'm going to go ahead and pull that loop through, okay? This is picky. So I, I took that out again because I wanted to make sure there wasn't one, an edge closer that I could grab because it seemed to be kind of a big gap between the loop I just pulled up which I'm actually now deciding that I'm going to twist. I'm going to take that back out and I'm going to knit into, I'm going to twist it, put it back on the left needle, then I'm going to knit into it. And I did that because it, there, see, much less of a gap doing that. Sometimes it just takes a little, fid, you know, some fidgeting to figure out what works best for the piece that you're doing and what's going to make it look the way you want it to look. And it's totally fine to take it out and do it over again. Okay, so there's one. I'm going to go in right there. There's two. Can you guys see where I'm deciding to go in? There's another bar right there. I'm going to go in there. Okay, there's three. And that is a little bit uh, tight, but that's okay. Just make it work. There's four. Okay, here comes the fifth one, five. Now, this has a little bit of a gap, and that's where I began. This is a little bit of a gap right here. I don't know if you can see that very well. That's where I began the cable cast on before. So I'm gonna go in there, that will be six, and again, I'm probably gonna add a couple extra because I don't like holes, so. Six. There's going to be number seven. And there's where I started. I'll snug that up. 
Whoops. I'm trying to go in here. I want it there. I want to get a hold of this loop. Or, sorry, this tail end. This is the... This one's coming out from the other side when I cut the yarn originally when I started the thumb gusset. But here's the tail that I started with. So I want to keep that out of my way for a moment. And I'm going to use my other needle to go in under here. And just like before, I'm going to twist it. I'm going to put it on here and I'm going to twist it. See, I put it on there. Now I'm going to grab the bottom edge of it twist that loop and knit into it okay now I still have this tail here from when I joined the yarn at the beginning of this round so I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that let me get myself back around here hang on just hang on to that for a second there's my working yarn hang on to this for a second and then work your needle back through here so we can begin again with our ribbing, okay? What I'm gonna do with that tail, I could certainly go ahead and tie it. I could tie it right here and then just weave it in. I think I will tie it just because this is a thumb of a mitten. It might experience a little bit of stress. So I am probably gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and tie a square knot that will be on the inside. And since it's going to be down inside the webbing, it shouldn't bother you. It shouldn't, you know, feel like anything or be an irritant to the inside of your hand in any way. If you don't choose to tie a knot, some people are just totally anti-knot. That's okay. What you can do, if you chose to, is just simply knit that tail together with your next round, with your working yarn. For example, you could just go ahead, lay it next to your working yarn like this, go ahead and wrap it around and knit it knit it together with it if you chose to and that would be okay too why am I hung up here okay so I went in go around counterclockwise and through okay and knit it again you know you could just knit oh dang it see I got all kinds of problems here Okay, let me pull that tail out of there and grab that loop before I lose it. Things happen. The key here is not to panic. There we go. Grab that loop, pull it back up, make sure it's not split. Okay. Anyway, the point is you can take the tail in and rather than weaving it, you can just go ahead and knit it together with your working yarn. Do that across three or four stitches if you like to secure it. I prefer the knot thing, especially for, you know, a mitt or some kind of garment that's going to see quite a bit of use in my life. Um, so there, I just did that and I'll trim off, trim off that tiny little tag end. And then I'm just going to continue on with my working yarn. So I'm still doing that knit four purl two ribbing and I'm just going to go all the way around to the desired length of my thumb. Okay, one thing I wanted to clarify here, on the inside of the thumb where I picked up those stitches and knitted across, um, I'm going to do this in pattern where I have the knit for purl to ribbing, but I have more than a multiple of six stitches here, so it's not going to come out right. Um, but I, again, I don't want a hole in the where the thumb attaches to the rest of the mitt. So I knitted the first two together, and then I'm going to go ahead and just carry on in pattern. Well, let me, let me back up. Let me just back up and show you. Okay. So I have a section here that appears to have more pearls. So I may knit, knit one of those together. So you just kind of want to look at it and plan it out so it's going to look right. You want your pearl stitches to land in the, the pearl column here. So if I'm going to knit four across, then those will be where my pearls are. Because I want to try to keep my pattern, the integrity of my ribbing, so that it looks correct. Um, even though I need to do a decrease here because I have more than a multiple of six on this the back side. Okay, so there's four. I'm going to purl two together right here, actually. So that will still maintain the look of what I'm trying to do. Okay, purl two together, purl one. Now I'm going to knit one two, three, four, and then 
I'm gonna purl two together. Because these are the others that I picked up to mitigate any gappage. And then I'm gonna purl two more together. Okay, so now I'm down to a multiple of six. And then I can just carry on with my ribbing to the desired length of the thumb. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, you know, if that's confusing in any way, shoot me shoot me a question in the comments or a Facebook message or email, whatever works for you. All right, I've knitted as far as I wanted to up the thumb. For me, that was uh, 16 rows. Maybe it's 15. I think I had to set it at 16 with the bind off. So I'm going to bind off this in the same way that I did the top part of the mitt where I'm just going to go in and knit one stitch. Okay, knit one stitch. I'm going to make sure that's a, actually I'm going to pull that up, make sure it's pretty loose. Knit the other stitch. Also loosely and then go pull that one over the top. And carry on like that, binding off around, all the way around those 24 stitches then I'm just going to same as before I'm gonna cut the yarn and weave it through or you know weave it down in probably in this case I'll weave it down in the inside of the thumb join and just uh, go down a, a purl column or a knit column whichever appears to hide the tail end the most efficiently then we'll be ready to finish the second mitt and wear them. Okay, let me finish this and then I'll show you what the whole thing looks like when it's completed. All right, I'm done with my mitts. I'm done with the first one anyway. I have about half of the second one yet to finish, but I'm overall pretty happy with that. I like how I can tuck my fingers down in if I'm a little chilly out on my walk or I can leave them out. So, great, I'll post a picture when I get the second one done. Um, as always, um, hit me up if you have any questions or comments, and join our Facebook group if you like. And overall, I'd say I really like the this pattern, the hedgerow mitts.